Hello, you marvellous human being. Welcome to part two of our 2021 year in review. In yesterday's podcast, we spoke about all the amazing books we have read this year. And in this part two, we're going to discuss the key learnings that we've absorbed. And near the end, Chris, the founder of 42 Courses, will speak about the plans for the company for 2022 and how the user experience will improve even further. So without any further festive season ado, let's jump into the learnings. Well, I, w- I went first last time, so I won't go first this time. <laughs> okay, well, look, I'll, I'll go first to, to, to set the mood. So, because um, it's not things that I've learned from books as such. So, um, the, the real thing that stood out for me is that I have met so many amazing, nice, good people through, through 42 courses. Like when I joined, I was calling customers every single day to find out, you know, what kind of lives they lead and you know how 42 courses is part of their life and and it was just extraordinary i was people speaking to people in mexico australia all over europe america and every single person that i met was just fabulous and the different stories that they have and i just it's just so enjoyable especially in the years that we've had because of the pandemic Mm -hmm. and when you reach out to people to speak to people and so Many people are just so extraordinarily nice. It's just really heartwarming. Um, and uh, yeah, so that, that lesson that I learned was just reach out to people and talk because you just get so much back from just listening to people and, and hearing and the amazing stories and things that they do. So oh, just fantastic. And the second thing I learned also from the 42 Courses thing, uh, one of our big podcast videos this year was um with mark bowden and it's it's kind of going viral i would say on youtube and i think it's because so many people are leaving comments because mark is dyslexic and he speaks we speak about that in the podcast and how he was with that at school and everything and how it's a gift for him and it's like so many things have been given to the world by dyslexic people because they've got a different look at the world and in the comments so many people are saying like my child or I was like, you know, not diagnosed as dyslexic at school and their stories in the comment section, absolutely. Some of them are real tear jerkers actually. And some of them are really heartwarming. And, and that, that lesson for me is like, everybody's got a story and everybody's got something going on in their lives. And it's just to be mindful of that in your everyday dealings with everybody and, you know, give people a break. You know, if the, someone cuts in front of you in your car or something, you know, it's probably something else going on in their life. It's not just, you know, trying to get in front. So that was a real, a real lesson for me um, from the YouTube comments there. Yeah. You, and, you, and the uh, last thing is you need to become a professional YouTube uh, commenter or something. I think it's like the only <laughs> place in the internet, probably the only video on YouTube where all the comments are positive and lovely. It's like, <laughs> yeah. actually, people uh, said that. Yeah. In some comments. Yeah. Yeah. My third learning of the year is uh, Jake and I have been speaking a lot about simplification and it seems that in every kind of book that we read, there is a a rule about simplifying your life to, you know, make everything so much more efficient and effective. And so I tried to encapsulate the three rules to have a good life by simplifying. So rule number one for me, be kind. Rule number two, if it moves and it shouldn't use duct tape and if it doesn't move, but it should, Rule number three, use WD-40. Those are my three rules for a great life. Very good. Yeah, I love that. Elisa, you had three amazing things that you've learned. Oh, thank you. A lot of it was down to 42 courses because if anyone doesn't know, I was a super van before I joined the company. I did absolutely every course I could lay my hands on. I am sorry to the team in advance for irritating you all times of the day. But one of the most amazing learnings this year was the concept of Hofstadter's law, which is it always takes longer than you think it will, even taking into account Hofstadter's law. And I'm sorry, that was just my dog. A postman has dared to enter the neighborhood. Uh, Basically, anyone is liable for this. Daniel Kahneman thought a project would take two years, it ended up taking seven, and he's the king of behavioral economics. So if it can happen to him, it can happen to anyone. And I found it incredibly relevant to my professional life. 
The second thing I learned this year was the antithesis of Schadenfreude, Freudenfreude, which is instead of being taking joy in other people's misery, it's joy in other people's achievements, which I just think is a really lovely thing. It's so psychologically healthy and with the spirit of Christmas and everything. I absolutely loved it. The third thing is a bit left field, but I spent most of my year trying to save uh, this collection of trees that are some of the most spectacular in the country. Inevitably, it was one of those things where you walked past it every day, you didn't think about it. And then uh, homeowners went to their insurance company saying, we want the house underpinned because you have these huge trees next to some 90s and 30s houses. And basically the insurance companies did not want to pay for the underpinning. So they said, we're gonna take the tree out, but these are 170 year old trees. They're some of the finest specimens in the country. You will see them in uh, Jesse Nelson's video because the opening shot is perfect, Bill, and it's a picture of these trees. So most of my year was spent like just fighting, getting the signatures with petitions, trying to go to every community group, making sure that these trees were not in danger and temporarily they back, the insurance companies have backed off. But the tree protection orders were going to be removed because councils are now liable for tree protection orders when historically it was the central government and a completely unintended consequence is that councils can be strong-armed into taking away tree protection orders at a time of climate emergency. So that's something I want to work on next year, trying to change the law, because whoever designed it had this completely unintended consequence, but it was quite reassuring how the community just banded together and everyone was fighting to save like what are effectively national assets. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, that's such a lovely story and yeah, well done you for for taking hey. the initiative and, and following through because it can't have been easy dealing with insurance companies and uh, to be fair there were so many people involved and I was just kind of on social media trying to get the signatures for the petition I would wear a sandwich board I would practically do anything to save these trees at one point uh, I even like wrote international newspapers saying happy to pose in front of the trees but nobody got back to me surprisingly <laughs> maybe, maybe if you'd stuck yourself to one of the trees <laughs> change yourself to the tree yeah you know I, I i didn't see myself as a member of extinction rebellion but <laughs> <laughs> who knows yeah maybe next year what? maybe next what? year keep trying because the trees are still growing so keep going oh yeah they're only in their infancy a lot of them came from america it's amazing how much I now know about these trees having more than most of my life. And they're only in their infancy. They can live for thousands of years. Oh, wow. So their babies are 170 years old. Well done. Awesome. What, type, what type of trees are they? Uh, they're a collection of redwood, Caesars, and Wellingtonia sequoia. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they, they grow really big. They're... Yeah. Redwood, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's this very random thing they have in Harrow of this amazing collection of trees because it used to be the Duke of Chandos's estate and then he went bankrupt and the land got sold off, but this tree-lined avenue remained. Oh, and, yeah, we're, we're all going to have to come and visit it now. You've, you've told such a wonderful story. <laughs> I, I now need to see these trees. No, they, they are wonderful trees. I may be biased, but... They're spectacular. There is someone called Jenny Martin. So if Jenny, you're listening, hi. She told us how these trees were integral to Native American culture. And she was uh, showing us how you could use all of the tree and they were sacred uh, and they're just sacred en entities. So really, really moving experience. So many interesting people. And Bren, it goes to your point of everyone has a story. It's surprising how the community will unite over important things. And in a world like where the news cycle sometimes focuses on the most negative aspects of humanity, it's a really, really good thing to have. Yeah, for sure. Reach out to people. It's all doom and gloom in the news, but uh, people are so lovely. Yeah, well, Jake, come, come to 42 courses. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There you go. That's, so a, that's Jake, a very... Yeah, a very convenient segue you gave me there in terms of, of that, that point about the news, because one of the, the things on my list of things that I've learned this year was this um, 
this thing called via negativa which is obviously latin and i think it originally comes from christian theology about proving you know god exists by um saying all the things that he doesn't represent so it's kind of the the opposite the other side of the the coin so to speak and it's this idea that in life you know we're always trying to improve our lives through addition like you know i'll get this or i'll start doing that and actually it's much it's often much better to um take things away so it's this concept of addition through subtraction so you can make improvements in your life by taking away the bad things um, as opposed to trying to add the good things. So the news mm. is a fantastic example. You know, one way to improve your happiness is simply to just stop watching the news because as you rightly say, it, it's this endlessly negative cycle. Um, yeah. And obviously that's very an easy, an, an easy thing to do as opposed to trying to add something into your life to make you more happy. Um, and when you start to think about it, it's an incredibly powerful thing because you can apply it to, you know, all domains of your life. So you know, instead of trying to improve your diet by learning how to cook healthier food options, you can just remove all the extra processed foods or sugary foods or foods with other add additives and e, e numbers. And, and so when you start to think about this idea of addition through subtraction, it's mm. amazing how you can apply it to, to all elements of your life. So yeah, I guess it's ultimately you know, rather than trying to think out, figure out what you should do, it's it's better to work out what not to do. Um, so yeah, the news is a great example. Yeah, that's the, the great application of the via negativa is stop watching the news. It's all <laughs> doom and gloom and you, you open the window and you hear bird song and see the sun shining. <laughs> yeah, or, or get out there and save, save some trees or, or pick up the phone and talk to some people in Mexico. Um, yeah, yeah that, 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 was, that was a good one. And I think that's you know, one of the many brilliant ideas that come from reading a lot of Nassim Taleb's books, like the Inserto is a masterful piece of, of work, his kind of five five books on uncertainty. And I can't remember which one Via Negativa is in, but those books are an incredible read. I don't think there's anything I've read with more, you know, useful, practical information in it than, than his stuff. Um, and then my second one was this Tibetan word I came across. I'll obviously completely destroy the pronunciation of it but um it's redok r-e-d-o-k i'm not sure how how it's actually said in the, in the language but it's um it's a portmanteau or contraction of the words rewa which means hope and dopka which means fear and it's kind of this idea of acknowledging that they they both coexist uh, and and come from the same pay uh same place sorry which is uncertainty essentially um and I, I suppose i'd never really thought about hope and fear being two sides of the the same coin um and i know that seems silly because so many things in life are you know love and hate or light and dark or um happiness and sadness um but yeah i, th I thought it was a very interesting one to think about uh hope and fear being being the same the same thing or the same side of um or different sides of the same coin um so that was number two it's a little bit and like uh, uh, a little bit like memento mori from the stoics isn't it like you know when you yeah. realize that you're going to die then you see the beauty of life and you know yeah yeah no that's a that's a great parallel yeah that's another fantastic um idea and i think my third one is probably this this idea of the difference between um errors of uh, commission and errors of omission um and you know when we when we talk about mistakes we always say oh i made that mistake it's like making it's always an active thing you know i filled out the wrong part of the form or i misread the the number on on the ticket you know that those are errors of of commission because you you did something actively you know to make the mistake um, you misread the number or you didn't fill out the right right thing um but what we kind of <clears throat> speak about less frequently which i think is in some ways more interesting are errors of omission as in mistakes by cause by not doing something you know as in not taking any action at all and you know one example might be something like you know not setting aside money for retirement um, because obviously you wouldn't notice it at the time but that that's obviously a huge error of omission uh, when it comes to the time to retire and there's there's no money in the bank um 
Mm. And I think Elon Musk talks a lot about this in the context of, of risk. You know, we always think about risk of the risk of doing something. We never talk about the risk of not doing something uh -huh. as in if you don't take any action um, or if you're not in the game, you'll never have a chance to, to compete or to win. Um, and yet the way we frame risk and the way we frame making mistakes is always from, from the active, um, which I think is uh -huh. very interesting. Um, and I, I, yeah. I guess no doubt it's something to do with, with schooling, right? Like being told making mistakes is a bad thing. Um, mm. Maybe. Yeah. The only way to find out is to do it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's, it's, yeah, it's that idea that you've never really thought about that, you know, not taking action is a form of action in itself. Um, the marketing slogan, nobody ever got fired for buying IBM works on that basis. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a great, a great example. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking about that very same line last night, bizarrely enough, in a conversation with someone here in Sweden who used to buy IBM mainframe computers in the 70s. So it's kind of weird that you mentioned it then. Uh, that's strange, but I think peer pressure plays a phenomenal role in um, mistakes by omission. I think it was on one of the courses, actually, that study where they had people deliberately give the wrong answer and people were willing to follow along with the wrong answer, even though they knew it was incorrect because they didn't want to violate the group norms. Mm. Yeah. yeah, those are fascinating, all of those experiments. Science, they? Of course, I think. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah, they're fascinating, like um, how yeah, intelligent people will give the wrong answer to something, even though they, they know it's wrong, just, just to fit in with the, with the group. Cool um, stuff, Jake. Thank you for those. Um, Irene, what's what are your key learnings? <laughs> I must say, when I was um, I was chatting to Chris about this earlier, and we were saying it's so difficult to actually really think about everything that you've learned over the course of an entire year and pick three, because we think like you learn something every day, whether it's like big or small. There's you know always something that you're learning. So, so I think um, I do a lot of research into fun facts. <laughs> <laughs> which is always great. Um, and I, I must say, like, I learn a lot of super interesting things. They might not be like, you know, life changing, <laughs> um, that kind of things that I've learned. But one thing that I thought was really, really quite amazing is that um, I learned that the smell of oranges can instantly make someone happier. So if you ever have somebody who's um, sad or just needs a little bit of uplifting, you can literally slice an orange and instantly <laughs> smell the oranges make people happy, which I thought was really interesting. Um, but not, not a chocolate orange. It has to be a real orange, right? <laughs> a real orange, apparently. Yeah. Yes. The, real very orange. Chocolate, orange. Orange. chocolate orange make me happy as well. Yeah. <laughs> I had one last night. <laughs> very Christmassy. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so I'd say that's definitely one. Um, and then at the moment, this is just like a very recent one, which I just thought was um, very interesting. We're currently running something called the um, Worldish Cup of Christmas ads. And um, one of the things that I actually learned was that Coca-Cola inspired Santa Claus's red suit from a 1920s advert. I didn't know that. I thought that was <laughs> super interesting. And now I've been telling all my friends and family, and it's amazing how many people actually don't know it, and they think it's just a really interesting fact. So it used I to think be green. Was, green. Yeah, yeah. It's green. Yeah. So that I thought was was very interesting. And then I think just um, from like a professional point, I think what I learned this year is something like the concept of marginal gains, which I think is just a really interesting way to frame the goals that you set out to complete within a year. So instead of focusing on one goal as a goal in its entirety, if you actually break it up into smaller parts, you'll deliver something that even exceeds the bigger goal because you actually have time to focus and put a lot of energy into all of the small parts of a goal, which then when you combine them to actually make the, the full goal, you'll actually exceed a lot of the, um, you'll exceed what you basically set out to do, which I always, I think that that's a really interesting way to think about working and, and you know, applying it to big goals, small goals, any, any kind of goal, which I thought was cool. I was, I was thinking about that um, maybe a day ago or 
maybe two days ago and i was thinking that for the next year instead of like trying to do a new year's resolution it would be better to have like a goal and to do as you're saying marginal gains to try and reach that goal eventually in that kind of like james clear atomic habits kind of way rather than trying to just change overnight to this yeah makes sense yeah so how apt chris in the christmas hat with the christmas tree what are your (laughs) at this time of year what are your three key learnings uh, if I say, I think I've got the most festive background, but not the best background. Like I think Irene with, you know, lion's head and blue sky in the background kind of takes takes it. I think wins it for the day. Very jealous. Um, that's what happens when you live in in paradise in Cape Town. Um, yeah, for me, I think uh, it's interesting listening to everyone else's. There's lots of similarities, I think, between some of the things that I was thinking about. Um, and some of the things that you were saying, I had to, I'd had down here, um, I had down here a few things. I think the the one of the, the the first one was was actually from that book, no no rules rules, which was and it was not necessarily a new lesson. I think it was just a really good reminder of when, particularly in a business sense, when something goes wrong, it's important not to overreact and then stop you know, put loads of rules in place to stop that thing from ever happening again. Um, in that if you look at most uh, very large old legacy companies, it's often very hard to get stuff done. And normally it's because 50 years ago, someone did something which someone didn't like. And so they put a rule in that meant that you can't do that anymore. So if you look at like a, a, an old company's rule book, um, you know, often the, the, the rule book is, ginormous um you would need an insane memory to be able to know what you can and can't do and there's tons of processes in place to stop things that they don't want to happen from happening so for example if even if people are given a company credit card there's there's a whole load of you know very strict rules and when you can use that and when you can't and often they don't make any sense um and so i just think particularly for us as we're a new newer company And we're growing and we're starting to see, you know, every now and then some things happen and you're like, oh, I wish that wouldn't happen. I'm being very mindful to to not just go, ah, like, right, let's stop this from ever happening again. Because I think um, in the long run, it could actually just just, um, slow us down and and, and make make life not so helpful. I think the other one was, was one which I mentioned before, which was that user manual for me. I loved that idea so much. Um, we talked about it at the beginning, so I'll kind of skip it over a bit. And then the third one, which I think relates to the simplicity thing, is just something I've, it's not, again, not necessarily, I think it's just something I've been pondering on. It's not necessarily a brand new lesson. It's just something that I've thought about a lot was, there's that, I think it's the phrase is like, you know, are you running your business or is your, your business running you? And and I, I think at certain times this year, I've been guilty of letting the business run me and that I find myself running around trying to you know, get stuff done and <clears throat> working on things that you know, are kind of already there, as opposed to spending more time on, on thinking about the future and doing fun things. And there's good reasons for it. Um, you know, we, can't, we can't control what comes up in the day, but you know, it's just something that, that came up. I think actually um, this is a fourth random one, but we were all chatting to our developer. Um, one of our developers is in in Nigeria, and he um, we said, "Oh, when when are you leaving?" And he said, "I'm leaving next tomorrow." And we were like, "What did he say?" And he said, "Next tomorrow." And apparently, in in parts of Africa, "Next tomorrow" is a very common say- saying, which means the day after tomorrow. <laughs> I just thought that's uh-huh. so good. Next tomorrow. <laughs> what a cool. What a cool slang. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that's that's kind of that's it. But thank you so much for 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 hosting this, Brandon, for being amazing uh, at your uh, your podcasting uh, hosting skills uh, off the charts as always. Um, totally enjoyable. All the people that you speak to and all the things you find out as we in in all of our work, it's uh, amazing. Just the, the learnings that you can get and how you can apply them to life. We're very lucky and um, yeah, I mean, to anyone listening is our, our customers, thank you so much for allowing us to, to have this job and um, yeah, it's your support that makes it all 
possible and we hope we do a good job and you enjoy it and uh, and wherever you are in the world you're having a fantastic festive holiday season whatever you celebrate um wherever you are and um yeah i hope, hope to see you back learning again soon and yeah i look forward to, to marking all your stuff and <laughs> <laughs> growing. hope you enjoy all the new courses that we end up building we've got, got some really fun things going forward for next year i think we were supposed to have a whole section on this on the podcast but we probably run out of time but there, there are a few big things that we're, we're hoping to do for next year so i think we've got a lot of work around community stuff that we want to do so we really want to um, help make it easier for learners to, to connect with each other um, so we're setting that up at the moment i think you'll delight, uh, enjoy it we're also about to launch <clears throat> a way that you can comment on different people's opinion answers. So in, in our courses, you can obviously see other people's answers a lot of the time. <clears throat> We're making it so that you can reply to those. And the other thing was, I think we've, we're reaching a point where we've got so many courses. We're going to create, we're going to make it a little bit easier and a little bit more enjoyable for you to help find the course that's right for you. Um, so whether this is for our business customers or whether this is for an individual, uh, there's some more design improvements that we're working on for that, which hopefully will come out, you know, early-ish next year. But um, yeah, I guess till then, thank you. And thank you everyone here for joining. And, um, yeah, huge, huge love. <laughs> and a Merry Christmas to all. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank, Merry Christmas. You. thank you, Ben. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Loads of love. Bye. Bye. Bye.